I'm Anne Emery. You're watching Data Viz on the Go, the series where you learn Data Viz time savers inside everyday software like Excel. Hello from Atlanta. I'm here teaching a pre-conference workshop tomorrow, and I was just about to go to the gym and get in a kid-free workout, and I thought, why not make you a YouTube video? Because apparently, that's what people like me do for fun when we travel. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how tiny differences can add up to completely overhaul your data viz. And I made up this pretend example for us with pretend numbers and lorem ipsum pretend text. And you can see right away that they're obviously different. Hopefully we're in agreement that the one on the left is like, ugh, and the one on the right is like, oh, simple. That's easy to read. There are a ton of differences between these, probably a dozen little things. So let's go through these one at a time. And my goal is to convince you to try this in your work too. Okay, so let's scroll down and take a peek at the first one. I usually start with decluttering, little stuff like removing the borders from around graphs. It's just a 1% improvement. Another thing I usually do is I peek at the scale and the grid lines, and I make sure that they're not redundant. Look at the one on the left. We've got the scale labeled. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 with the grid lines. But because we also have the exact values on each column, they're redundant. So a good rule of thumb is you pick one or the other, either label the scale so that people can estimate the values, or if your audience wants more specificity, if they're more technical, then put the labels on the columns, which is what I opted for on the right. I still do label the min and the max to give people the truthful view of the data. Okay, here's another quick win is use your branding. It only takes about five minutes to set up your theme colors and your theme fonts for the very first time. You also can change those colors to make the data feel like less. When I look at the right, I'm like, oh, that's easy. It's just four things. We call that categorical color coding. And it's a nice way to kind of like trick yourself and trick your audience into the data not feeling like this much data. It just feels like a few manageable categories or chunks of information. The one on the left has software defaults, unreadable color contrast. I don't even know if you can see the gray labels on top of the purple columns. Can you kind of see them if you look really close? So obviously I had to change the font colors to white. And then another rule is anytime you're using color, something other than black and white, we've got purple here, we've got blue here, whatever your brand colors are, anytime you're using color at all, also make the labels bold. Do you see the slight difference? The one on the right is white, but it's also bold for that little oomph in color contrast. The one on the left has our software default body fonts, which are usually size nine or 10 in a lot of software programs. I always use at least 11 for documents and at least 18 for slide decks. On the left, we've got typewriter font where everything is the exact same size, like the typewriter era. On the right, that's what we call a hierarchy. Your title is gonna be the largest, boldest, darkest, followed by headings, subheadings, body. And don't be afraid to go a little bit bigger than you're comfortable with here. We're not gonna have headings that are like size 14. You know, go a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So your headings can really stand out and help to categorize the graphs and the information. We don't do all caps. We don't do all lowercase. Mixed case is the fastest to read. We don't do centered alignment. We also don't do justified. Left aligned text is also the fastest to read. The default gap width, which is the gap between the bars, how much space you have between your bars or columns, don't the bars look really like stripey and skinny. They almost look just so separate. I like a smaller gap width. A personal preference is about a 30%, which is what I've done here. It helps with grouping. When you've got multiple graphs on one page, you can see like, oh, these bars are close to each other. They go together. They're part of the same topic in that graph. 
The one on the left has no white space. All the charts are just right up next to each other. There's no spacing anywhere. On the right, we've got very purposeful white space. I usually aim for about a thumb's width, about a half an inch of white space in between all of the pieces. Finally, I always aim for at least one inch margins. If possible, this one's a little aspirational. Sometimes I do have to shrink the margins down to maybe a half an inch, but I do aim for one inch because sometimes people do print, you know, static dashboards, one pagers, fact sheets, policy briefs. And when they do print it, they like having that space to write in the margins. Okay, so let's take a peek at the beginning where we started. And if you left everything alone, like the one on the left, uh, meh, right? It would be unreadable, really teeny tiny font, really tricky color contrast and just smushy and really old school looking, old school, not in a good way. And then if you just make this 1% difference and 1% difference and 1% difference, all these little quick wins, look at how they can really add up to completely transform your page. Okay, let me know in the comments, have I convinced you to try at least one of these? Maybe you're gonna boost up the font size. Maybe you're going to take a peek at your color contrast. Maybe you'll try making each graph a different color to chunk the information better. If you've got any how-to questions, comment down below and I can send you some links to some tutorials.